Shall we pray? Father, breathe the breath of life on your word this uh, evening in Jesus' name. Um, this is Online Healing Crusade, and uh, you are welcome to the program. It's a ministration of uh, crusade that is made available to us every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one from Nigeria broadcasting to the world. And um, since we do that every day, I ensure that you join us all the time. You always meet us here, sending the word of life. Uh, let me start today from Luke chapter 8, verse 41. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one and only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay at dying, but as he went, the people thronged him. Verse 49. Why he yet speak, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue, house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. And when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into their house, he suffered no man to go in except Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden, and all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose straight away, and he commanded to give her meat, that is food. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. Praise God. Now, this is um, one of those things that Jesus Christ did, uh, but we need to learn the principles and the operation of how did this happen, and how can it happen in our day using the same power and the principle of the Lord Jesus Christ to duplicate the things that Jesus has done in his time. And this can also be applied to situations that we find ourselves today at any time for us to be able to receive the same result. Now, the first thing is, this man, though he is highly placed in the society, he did not use his position. He left his position when he was in a desperate need of solution. When you need the solution to a problem, you forget about your age, you forget about your class, you forget about um, whatever position you are in the society because God treats people equally when they come to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? I was with an elderly man who is um, a, a medical doctor, a very, very senior medical doctor. In fact, he has gotten to retirement age, you understand what I'm saying? But he's been a surgeon for years. And he said something that I, I noted. He says, when it comes to medicine, all animals are equal. He said, if the queen of England had a sickness, let's say malaria or whatever, and then a pauper had malaria, you will treat the two of them equally with the same drug. So it means when the man comes to the level of you are sick, you need to be healed, it's not that, uh, no, I'm a rich person, give me a better drug. <laughs> no, it's the same drug. You understand what I'm saying? It is the same thing you apply for this that you're going to apply for that because you treat them equally as normal, natural human being. And they have the same physiology, they have the same uh, uh, anatomy, they have the same biochemical, whatever, functioning of their body and, uh, and system of their body is the same for a rich man and for a poor man. So, in this case, when this man had a problem, and not of him, but the only daughter, you know, and she came to Jesus, he did not come as if, I'm a big man, Jesus, come and attend to me or something. No, he came, in fact, he worshipped Jesus. Are you getting what I'm saying? He fell down at Jesus' feet. And now besought him or begged him that he come to his house to come and minister to his child. You know what I'm saying? And he said, the child is at the point of death when I left the house to come and meet you, sir, because I know you have power over sickness, disease, infirmity, and even death. Are you getting it? So, we can take you from that, that when you need help 
forget it, but you are an important person, therefore you need a better whatever is where or whatever. The power of God will do the same thing that will do for you for any other person. And once you respond to God like that, in faith, not with class, but with faith, God will never discourage any adventure of faith. God will always you know, move towards the direction of faith. And whosoever have faith and come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he will not, you know, uh, he, he, he will not send them back as if you can't get help here. No. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, in verse 49, he said, while he was here speaking, uh, somebody came and said, the doctor that you said is uh, sick at the point of death, he has now died. So you don't need to trouble the master anymore. We learned a lesson here. No case is incurable to God. No case is bad that God can no more handle it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Before, it was at the point of death when he left the house. Now they said, oh, we all hope is lost. He's no more at the point of death. He has now died. So it's like uh, somebody that, um, you know, you, you are believing God for a miracle, and you came to the Lord Jesus Christ or something, or maybe a doctor or whatever, and then they now tell you that the situation is not as it used to be. It has grown worse. Uh, it's no more ordinary headache. It's now serious migraine or something. It's not only that uh, you, you, are be, you are worried. No, you have, it has changed to total brain damage or something. Are you getting what I'm saying? From a small or lesser case to a higher case. Even at that, God can still handle it at lesser level or at greater level. Are you getting it? That's what I want us to learn from that. So you can't say, oh, uh, if it is, if you have come sometimes earlier, maybe you will have been able to help. But now, it, the case is so bad that uh, there's nothing anybody can do about it. Fine, if anybody cannot do anything about it. But God is not just anybody can do something about it. And the power of God and the anointing of God is always available to be able to help humanity. I, mm -hmm. That's why He has anointed some of us and some other people all over the world. That when situation is so bad, when they get to the place where the anointing of the Lord Jesus Christ is and the power of God is, He can turn situation around. Are you hearing me? Okay. So, Jesus now says something that's important after that statement. You know, that is not one directed to Jesus, it's directed to the man that came to Jesus, which is uh, the ruler of the synagogue. Okay, Jairus by name. And Jesus now said, Fear not, only believe, and she shall be made whole. Either from sickness, she will be made whole. If it is from death, she will be made whole. If it is from a minor case, it will be made whole. If it is from a major case, it will be made whole. If it is from a critical condition, it will be made whole. If it is from a terminal condition, it will be made whole. Just believe. Don't drop your faith. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, never you think, ah, the situation is so bad, now it has gone beyond repair. There's nothing that is beyond repair with God. But if Jesus did not come in to come and say that word, the faith with which the man had come before, believing that if I can just get to Jesus now, ah, the bad case of this small daughter of mine is going to be restored. I'm sure if Jesus can just pray, the lady will come back and she becomes strong, she will not die again, and all that. This terminal case will be terminated. That kind of a thing. But now when they now say, ah, he has died. Oh, sorry. But God can raise the dead also. Jesus said, she will be made whole. Are you getting what I'm saying? Only believe. If you don't drop your faith, you can get your miracle. Verse 51. And when he came into the house, he did not allow anybody to enter into the house except Peter, James, and John. You know, those are the closest three to Jesus. So he might got there with uh, all the twelve, but even he did not allow all the twelve to enter. He only picked James, John, and uh, Peter. And then the two people that the case concerned, the father and the mother of the baby, of the, of the daughter that's uh, 12 years daughter. So you know those ones, uh, their faith will be high because they want their child to come back to life. You understand what I'm saying? So then these other three, they have been following Jesus around and they have seen a lot of things happen and they know that when Jesus prays, something will surely happen. Those people, their faith is not going to draw Jesus down. But everybody crying and uh, weeping and mourning outside who said, oh, he has died. What do you want to go and pray again? I say he has died. No, those people should not come in. You get what I'm saying? So the same thing, when you need a miracle at times, you have to separate yourself 
you that you have faith for the miracle from those who do not have faith for the miracle. Because if you mix with those people, there is a way they will to keep on discouraging you. You think anything can happen again, you better forget it and all that. If somebody is like that around you, you need to run away from that kind of a person. He is not going to allow your faith to work. Are you getting it? So you have to, and faith coming by hearing and hearing. If you keep hearing those negative things that you are saying, it will weaken your heart. If this woman, I mean, this man has heard about, oh, it's no more sick now, he has died. And they didn't hear the one that Jesus Christ said, fear not, only believe. Okay? There will be nothing to counter that thing that he has just had. She's not, he's not going to be at the state of, oh, sorry. Jesus, you can go back. Jesus, just forget. Maybe it's, it's just his faith that that's what's going to happen to him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, we have tried. No. He didn't give up. So we should not easily give up. But we should hold on to our faith where we'll be able to get the miracle we need. And all people were weeping and all that. They are weeping that day. And Jesus Christ told them, it's not there. Don't mention that here. Don't welcome that. Don't invite that. Are you getting what I'm saying? And though they laugh him to scorn, he put them out. Those who are laughing him to scorn, he put them down. Those who believe in him, he allowed them to enter. So that's the same thing that we do anytime we need the supernatural power of God to come into play. And when we do that, we'll see God walking out. And finally, verse 54. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, that is young girl, arise. And her spirit came again. And she arose and straightway. And he commanded her to be given food. So look at the process. He said, Maid, arise. He didn't say, Dead, arise. Maid, young girl, get up. As if you are just talking to a normal person that has not died. Are you getting it? Because that's what the faith has believed. It's not going to die. It's going to come alive. Everything will be restored. She's going to be made whole. Now, he said, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again. The spirit, the living spirit that is in her before death came, the spirit came again. That means wherever the spirit has gone to, the spirit will now return back to the body. Are you getting what I'm saying? By the grace of God, I pray for somebody that died before, uh, not once, at least twice or whatever. But the first one, which is uh, a little child, you understand what I'm saying? This child, no, no, that was not the first one. Uh, the first one was in the village of Isham, where I was a missionary, and then somebody came. I was sick when he came to me, uh, looking for her, but he didn't find me at home. So by the time I came back, I had that social person came looking for me, uh, but for the last two days and all that. By the time I got there, the sick case was bad. He was lying down inside. People have left him there waiting for him to die because he's already gasping. And then I started praying. I was praying. He's so much far gone that he could not answer amen when I was praying. I guess what I'm saying, but it got to a point after much prayer, a spirit, the spirit came back. And he said, Amen. How can a dead person say Amen? <laughs> that means he has heard what I'm saying. You understand what I'm saying? So that's how the first one I saw. But the second one that is very graphic was the one that happened when there was a crusade that had in the front uh, in the Udo State uh, on the way to Benin. And uh, it's an open air crusade. It was an open air crusade then. And, um, you know, uh, I ministered to people in the first night of the program. After that, the second day, we had ministers' conference. And then as I was ministering to all of the ministers, then I saw from outside because others were backing that door and I was facing the door because I was the one preaching. I saw a woman moving up and down outside the church that we were using. And I said somebody should check out what's happened to that woman while she moving out. And then by the time they did that, they now find out that the woman um, uh, said, I brought my child or baby yesterday to be prayed for because he was sick. Today the child has died, just died. I said, when I had that, I said, should we bring the baby? He just come to report to us without bringing the baby. Go and bring the baby. So others followed her with a vehicle to go and bring the baby. And when they brought the baby, while the pastors were still trying to pray together, bind the devil and all that, I moved a little to the side and I talked to God. What am I going to do? He told me to come for this program. I prayed for a this child yesterday. So what's going to happen now? The news was not go around that uh, the man of God lay hand on a living person, the person become a dead person. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, God now said, you carry the child and speak the following words. Command the spirit of death to leave. Get out. And then command the spirit of life to come in unto the baby. And that's all. And I said that. I carried the baby. I told everybody to keep quiet. Wait on 
what I'm going to say, and after that, they cannot respond in amen, in agreement. So I prayed those two prayers by the spirit of death, and then, I mean, cast out the spirit of death, and then call in the spirit of life into the child. And that was all. So it took some minutes after I kept on praying in the spirit because I don't know what next to say since it didn't give me more than two lines. So, and after that, I see life come into the child. You understand what I'm saying? So, if you follow God and you did not drop your faith, because if this man has dropped his faith, that, oh, there's nothing that can happen, it's already a bad case now, he's not going to receive the miracle. Because he's the one that came. It's not the dead child that we need the faith of the dead child. We need the faith of the person standing for the child. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, if you are the one coming to God, never you drop your faith. It doesn't matter how bad the situation is. And then the spirit, when we rebuke spirit, the spirit are subject to us, then the power of God make that thing to happen. Are you getting it? So, uh, uh, and that is what we see. And um, today, uh, I, I want to pray with you. I don't know what you are going through. Right? And the, the case is going from bad to worse. The case is not getting better at all. And you are looking as if uh, it's, it's, there's no hope that this thing can ever become positive. Don't think that. Don't worry like that. Don't fear like that. And don't welcome negative thoughts. And don't throw away your faith. Don't throw in the tower. Don't say you, there's no more hope. There's nothing you can do as long as God is alive. If you can't turn the situation around, and God can turn the situation around, with man, it may be possible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you must not lose your faith with God. And I want to minister to you today and bring you back from that state of despair and that state of fear and worry over what you are going through that is not becoming better, that is becoming worse. From that level it gets to God will turn it around for you today. Father, in the name of Jesus, everyone listening to me, wherever they are, and they are going through some stuff and the situation is not getting better, but I rebuke you, devil, that is behind all those affliction and oppression in the name of Jesus. And I ask for supernatural turnaround Overturn, 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 that God bring a divine overturn in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Let each and every one of those who are listening to me today have a living miracle of divine turnaround from what look worse, from bad to worse, to sudden change unto life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Well, until tomorrow, the healthy will be restored. God bless you.